So hey everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we will be solving the problem sum of all divisors from 1 to n. So let's read the problem statement out. So we are given a positive integer n. The task is to find the value of a function where function f of i for the number i is defined as a sum of all divisors of i. So let's read the explanation as well. For example if n is equal to 4 our output is going to be 15. But how this output 15 is coming out? f of 1 is going to be 1 basically all the divisors of 1 is going to be 1 itself for f of 2 the divisors are 1 and 2 and the sum is going to be 3 for f of 3 the divisors are 1 and 3 and its sum is 4 similarly for f of 4 the divisors are 1 2 and 4 basically the divisors of 4 are 1 to 4 and the function f gives you the sum of all divisors of a given number so the sum is going to be 7 for 4 now if you sum up all of them your sum is going to be nothing but 1 plus 3 is going to be 4 plus 4 is going to be 8 plus 7 is 15. So you need to return all the divisors basically from 1 to n and for each of the numbers you need to find the sum of all the divisors you need to sum it up and you need to return it. Now the expected time complexity for this problem is going to be order of n and the expected space complexity is going to be order of 1. So let's discuss this problem in more detail. So what can be the brute force approach in order to solve this problem? Let's say our n is 4. Now f of 1 is going to be 1. As I told you, f of 2 is going to be 1 plus 2. f of 3 is going to be 1 plus 3. And f of 4 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 4. Right? Now the brute force approach is that you just simply run a loop for i equal to 1 till i less than equal to n. Okay? Because we need to find the divisors for all numbers from 1 to n now you can simply run a loop inside this for int j equal to 1 j less than equal to i and j plus plus so let's say if our i is 1 you will run your loop from 1 to 1 and you will check if i is divisible by j or not if it is divisible you will simply sum up j into your variable sum and you can get your answer right similarly for 4 your j will run from 1 to 4 and you will check for each of the values basically 1 2 3 4 and 1 will divide 4 2 will divide 4 and 4 will divide 4 so here you will add up 7 here okay because 1 plus 2 plus 4 is going to be nothing but 7 and in the end you can get your answer but in this approach your i can be maximum up to n and j can be less than equal to i so j in worst case will be equal to n and this will be a order of n square time complexity the space complexity here will be nothing but order of one right because you are simply using a sum variable now one solution will come to your mind let's run this j till square root of i so you can do that as well basically if you observe any number let's say 4 4's multiples are going to be nothing but 1 into 4, 2 into 2 and 4 into 1. So these and these are repetitive, right? So what we can do, we can simply run our loop from 1 to square root of a given number n and we can calculate all the factors, right? So how can we do that? Basically for 4, we will run our loop for j equal to 1 till j less than equal to square root of 4 which is 2 right and you will simply check if basically j into j is equal to n right so that is a corner case for a perfect square numbers in this case you will be simply summing up j in your answer otherwise you know like for example if j into j is equal to n means your j is going to be 2 so will you add up 2 twice no you will add up to only once right otherwise you will end up adding one right so that will be nothing but j and your other number is going to be nothing but i by j okay so j is going to be one initially your other number is going to be nothing but let's say i was four so 4 divided by j which is equal to 4 itself so you will add up 1 you will add up 4 here when you are at this case you will add up 2 only once so 
your overall sum will be nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 4 which is expected which is equal to 7 right now what will be the time complexity for this approach here you are using j loop which is running from 1 to square root of n so that you have optimized your time complexity to root n but your outer loop i will be running for n times because you need to do this for every numbers from 1 to n so your overall time complexity will be nothing but n root n and your space complexity here will also be order of 1 okay now this will not solve our purpose because n can be up to the range of 10 to the power 6 now we need to further optimize it so if you carefully observe the pattern let's say our n is going to be 6 okay so we need to calculate the sum of all the devices for every n from 1 to 6 okay so let's write it so f of 1 is going to be 1 f of 2 is also going to be 1 plus 2 f of 3 is going to be 1 plus 3 f of 4 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 4 f of 5 is going to be 1 plus 5 and f of 6 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 now you can observe one thing here like in this overall how much times one has occurred one has occurred nothing but six times right because you know one is the factor for every number so one has occurred six times right now how much time two has occurred two has occurred here two has occurred here and two has occurred here now if you observe from one to six what are all the numbers which divides two basically two four and six right and two has occurred thrice as well so you observed one thing basically yahan se hamara yahan tak jitna bhi number hoga theek hai jo bhi 2 se divide ho raha hai utni hi times hamara 2 bhi occur kar raha hai is pattern mein right so 2 has occurred 3 times similarly 3 kitni bar occur kar raha hai 3 hamara 1 to 6 mein 3 ko divide karta hai and 6 ko divide karta hai to 3 hamara 2 times occur kar raha hai right similarly 4 kitni bar occur karega 2 se leke 6 tak sorry 1 se leke 6 tak 4 hamara sirf 4 ko divide karta hai right so 4 hamara one time occur karega similarly 5 hamara one time occur karega and 6 hamara one time occur karega now what you can do you can simply multiply them okay so here 1 has occurred 6 times so 1 into 6 plus 2 into 3 plus 3 into 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 right so this is going to be 6 this is going to be again 6 this is again going to be 6 this is 4 plus 5 plus 6 so 9 plus 6 right so this is going to be 24 plus 9 33 now similarly if you observe for 4 so for 4 f of 1 is going to be 1 f of 2 is going to be 1 plus 2 f of 3 is again going to be 1 plus 3 and f of 4 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 4 for n equal to 4 our answer was 15 so 1 has occurred 4 times so let's add up 4 2 has occurred 2 times so 2 into 2 plus 3 has occurred 1 times plus 4 has occurred 1 time so 4 plus 4 is going to be 8 plus 3 is going to be 11 plus 4 is going to be 15 so in this way you can get your answer now in order to get this what you will be doing like you will be simply running a for loop for i equal to 1 to n right now your 1 will be occurring how much times it will be occurring nothing but n by i times right and you will simply multiply this by i because your i here is going to be 1 for the first loop so you will simply add up i into n by i to your answer and you can run your loop from 1 to n in this way you your loop will be running from 1 to n and it will be taking an order of n time and your space complexity will also be order of 1 so i hope you have understood the problem let's discuss the implementation first of all we have taken a variable answer which is of type long long okay 
and we will be simply running a loop from i equal to 1 till i less than equal to n because we need to do the operations for every numbers from 1 to n and we will be simply adding up i into n by i because let's say i is my current number and it will occur n by i from 1 to n right as we discussed and we will add it up and we can simply return our answer so i hope you have liked this video if you have any doubts write it down in the comments like this video if you have understood share among your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel thanks for watching